Well, I think my whole life I've been a, a bridge builder, right? Um, you know, my parents divorced when I was four years old. Uh, my dad was in an affluent suburb, Shaker Heights, Ohio. And uh, my mom and I went to live with my grandma uh, in Mount Pleasant. And so I've always been navigating uh, multiple worlds. And uh, my first love, as you know, uh, was playing ball. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought I was going to be the number two guard at Duke. <laughs> Uh, obviously, that didn't work out. Right. Uh, but you know, playing uh, sports growing up, whether it be basketball, football, baseball, running track, you know, I've always had this passion for uh, bringing people together mm -hmm. and sharing in uh, great experiences, and uh, that's an attribute I used uh, throughout my campaign last year as I was running for mayor, and it's the same kind of uh, attributes I bring every day as mayor of this great city. Mm -hmm. Now. January 3rd, you know, 2022. Yeah. What does that day mean to you? Seems like a lifetime ago. <laughs> right. Um, I, you know, I've been mayor now for over uh, 10 months since mm -hmm. I got sworn in on January 3rd. And um, in many ways, it was um, a priceless moment, uh, not just for me, but my entire family. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember taking the oath of office using um, uh, my late grandmother's Bible and seeing my mom and seeing her in tears, mm -hmm. uh, I really felt the magnitude of that moment then. And um, I, I tell a lot of folks who ask me, do I like being mayor? It's the best job I could ever have. Right. I have a lot of hard days, don't get me wrong, uh, but being mayor of your hometown, mm -hmm. particularly in this moment when there's so much on the line for uh, black and brown people across the city and across this country, uh, being able to lead with authenticity and being my true self is uh, certainly a dream come true. Mm -hmm. Now, was it any normal day for you to where, you know, for me personally, when it's a big football game or a big game for yeah. me, um, sometimes breakfast is light. It's, it's hard <laughs> for me to eat because a lot of yeah. nerves going in through the day. But for you, was it, did you just take it as a normal day? Uh, no, it was hard. Mm -hmm. I remember um, getting sworn in literally at midnight on January 3rd. Okay. So I think I tried to take a nap uh, and sleep before, but I was really uh, too excited. I had a ton of adrenaline. Uh, and then um, the inauguration, uh, the real inauguration lasted about an hour. Mm -hmm. I got home uh, around 1 a.m. And then I got a couple hours of sleep and came to City Hall that day to swear in my cabinet and to uh, check out my, my new digs and uh, take the helm of the city. So it was certainly not a normal day. Yeah, no, definitely. It's a beautiful office Thank as well. You. Thank you. Um, now, you, now, you said it's flown by or you, yeah. it seems like a long time ago. Have you had time to sit down and reflect and just appreciate where you are today? Not enough time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something I'm working on. Uh, I often tell folks that I'm a true uh, work in progress uh, because um, there is so much that needs to get done. Uh, to really execute my vision for the city that I feel, I feel like I don't have enough time right. to get everything done. And every day I'm in office is one less day I have uh, to be in office. Yes. Uh, yeah. But I'm hoping to take some time during the holiday season to uh, really take stock of uh, what has worked well this year, what didn't work well, and reflect on the journey I've been on over the last uh, couple of years and take all those insights and prepare for 2023 and uh, the year ahead. Mm -hmm. Now let's take it back to, you know, your foundation, yeah. you know, um, born on the east side of Cleveland. And then, like you mentioned, the Mount Pleasant neighborhood. How did that, how did growing up there and then also growing up with your grandma um, yeah. just help mold you into who you are today? It, it was everything for me. Um, you know, my, my other grandmother uh, passed away on her birthday. Uh, she was a, a ripe, young, 93 years old. Mm -hmm. And I think about her journey uh, to Cleveland. She grew up in the segregated South. Uh, her father uh, was the son of a sharecropper in Alabama, mm -hmm. in Jasper, Alabama. She only had a high school education. And like many black folks during her time, um, she thought that she could achieve the American dream in a city like Cleveland. And for her to sacrifice what she had to sacrifice, uh, raising four children as a widow, um, it truly was a dream come true to have my grandmother vote for me last year, right. to have her see me get inaugurated as mayor. That's the American dream. Right. And in no other country is my story possible. Uh, but the lessons I learned riding my bike on Dove and Lenny Craven Angeles, um, I learned the 
the importance of hard work. Mm. I learned the importance of uh, doing what you said you were going to do and sticking by your word. And I learned the importance of integrity and um, being a, a leader. And I think, um, you know, my grandmother and both of my parents gave me a lot of lessons that I use every single day as mayor. Mm -hmm. And now I don't know if we can see it, but behind you, uh, I noticed the, the fire helmet. Yeah. Um, and we're talking about, uh, or was your late father's Donald Bibb. Yeah. And yeah. so he, you know, spent time as a firefighter and then also a police officer. How did that relationship, you know, help mold you? And then also, you know, some of the actions that you are, you know, passionate about? Yeah. Um, my pops was the hardest working person I've ever uh, met. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember um, him working a full shift at the firehouse. He would come home, stop by Whit Morris, <laughs> we'll get some food. Whit Morris. <laughs> uh, watch, watch him some TV. He would always stay up late watching Sanford and Son right. mm -hmm. in good times. And I'd pass out with him and then he'd be up bright and early to go and uh, do a shift at the police station. Mm -hmm. And he never complained. He never said he was tired. Um, and I would often ask my dad, you know, Pops, why you work so hard? He would say, Justin, I'm working hard, so you don't have to work as hard as I have to. Mm -hmm. And he really laid the foundation for my brother and I uh, to really live successful, productive lives. And I'll always be forever grateful for his, uh, his commitment to public service. Mm -hmm. 